The One Piece manga just revealed the real name of one of the Gorosei and I accidentally used it to crack the hidden logic behind the entire One Piece series. Not only do we now know that the Gorosei are five of the seven most powerful people in One Piece and how they keep the world in balance, but also what might have really happened between the Gorosei, Emo and Joy Boy and how Luffy and Blackbeard tie into all of it. Now the Gorosei that gets revealed in chapter 1073 is this guy here with the white locks and the massive scar across the left side of his face. His real name is revealed to be Saint J. Garcia Saturn, a name that truly no one expected because you won't believe how much information we can pull from just this name. I promise you're going to love this. Okay, so the first thing that we can deduce based on the Saint title is that the Gorosei truly are celestial dragons themselves. This was actually only revealed quite recently. For the longest time, it was believed that the Gorosei were actually lower in authority than the average celestial dragon dragons who were simply in charge of running the world while the nobles themselves could enjoy their luxurious lives. However, during the Reverie arc, it was revealed that the Gorosei are nobles themselves with much, much more power than someone like this guy who Luffy punched in the slave auction house. And now this Gorosei in particular, Saturn, seems to be from a family called the J. Garcias, which surprisingly is only the second world noble family name that we have heard in the story next to the Don Quixote family. And so from this, we can now deduce that the Celestial Dragons seem to have a somewhat Spanish sounding theme to their names. The Don Quixote family and the J. Garcia family. Don Quixote is of course based on the famous book character Chasing Windmills, but J. Garcia doesn't immediately ring a bell. That is, unless you're really into rock music. Because as it turns out, J. Garcia was the guitarist and singer of a rock band called The Grateful Dead. And to be honest, there is quite a lot of similarity between him and Saturn, but he is not the only instrument inspiration for this particular Gorosei. Now in case you don't know, all five of the Gorosei are probably inspired by famous politicians of the past. The bold one with glasses is most likely based on the Indian revolutionary Mahatma Gandhi. The guy with the birthmark and the giant mustache is based on the last Soviet president Mikhail Gorbachev. This guy with the ridiculously long beard looks very similar to the Japanese politician Itagaki Taisuke. The blonde guy who basically looks like Sanji's long lost uncle is based on a young Abraham Lincoln. And finally, Saint J. Garcia Saturn looks like Karl Marx, and don't worry, this will all make sense in just a moment. Now, all of these figures represent very different political ideologies, and all of them have their own flaws. But what unites all of them, at least from a historical perspective, is that they are all heavily associated with giving people more freedom. Lincoln was of course known for ending slavery in the US, Gandhi ended British colonial rule in India, Marx's fundamental idea that was then later strongly misused by multiple regimes was the theory of liberty, stating that the freedom of the people is the most important right that should not be exploited and controlled by those with power and money. Gorbachev was the last president of the Soviet Union who with his ideas of glasnost and perestroika, openness and restructuring, promoted democratic thinking and liberty in Eastern Europe that ultimately led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. And finally, Itagaki was leader of the freedom and people's rights movement and involved with the founding of the very first democratic political party in Japan. Now there's really only a handful of things that we do know for a fact about the Gorosei. Surprisingly, even though they are the five most powerful people in the world, only answering to the secret ruler Imu, they were only introduced in chapter 233 of One Piece. The Gorosei have full control over the marines and all the cypher pole agencies. In fact, Rob Lucci's ZP0 serves only them. Which, by the way, makes Stussy's role as a double agent even more interesting in this chapter. I really wonder what information she might have overheard from the five elders that she could share with the Straw Hats. We also know that the Gorosei are fully aware of the true history and what has happened during the Void Century. And there's even a very popular theory that all five of them are actually from the Void Century themselves, former kings of the 20 kingdoms that created the world government who have then been granted immortality. The Gorosei have also conducted a number of great cleansings over time whenever a new threat to the world government's rule has popped up. However, one thing that we could only speculate about so far was their actual physical power. As celestial dragons, it would seem likely that the Gorosei have enjoyed a life of luxury without pain and suffering like all the other world nobles. 
nobles. However, not only do they not wear the same goofy looking spacesuits as the other world nobles, but they also seem to have real battle experience. The bald Gorosei is always wielding a sword that many believe to be the Shodai Kitetsu, the supreme great version of Zoro's Sandai Kitetsu sword or the Nidai Kitetsu that we saw in Wano. The guy who looks like Sanji's uncle looks extremely fit as well and Sant J Garcia's Saturn has a large scar across his face that really suggests he has seen some battles as well. So could the Gorosei themselves be hiding some truly powerful abilities? I think with the reveal of Saturn's name, there is a really high probability that the Gorosei cannot only fight, but that they are five out of the seven most powerful people in One Piece. But Manu, how in the world can you say that so confidently when you just have one mere name? I was getting to that, jeez. So the first thing you probably noticed about the name Saturn is that it is a planet. Duh. Now, this of course is interesting because the planets are named after Roman gods who again are based on Greek gods. And as you already know, all three of the ancient weapons are named after these gods as well and thus after a planet. Pluton is Pluto, Uranus is the planet Uranus, and Poseidon is the Greek version of Neptune. Now, these are the last three planets in our solar system. Well, at least they were when Oda started writing One Piece. Pluto has not quite survived since then as a planet. And now, if you know your planets using whatever memorization phrase you learned in school, you will know that Saturn is the next planet in line. Now, Coincidence, you could say, but first of all, those don't exist, especially not in One Piece, but check this out. There are nine planets, three of them are ancient weapons, one is Earth itself, which leaves us with five remaining planets for five of the Gorosei. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. And suddenly, the Japanese word Gorosei makes a lot more sense. Up until now, it used to be translated as the five elder stars. However, the kanji for star here also means planet. In other words, the Kurosei are actually the five elder planets. And on top of that, by revealing just one single name, Oda seems to tease all of the Gorosei's individual powers and positions. And there are actually two options for what those powers are. Number one are based on the Roman gods. We know that Poseidon is the god of the sea and the ancient weapon Poseidon, Shirahoshi, has the powers that are connected to the sea. Pluton, which is hidden inside the giant volcano on Wano, seems to have powers connected to the underworld like Pluto. And Uranus is speculated to be connected to the sky, just like the god of heaven. Now, going with that logic, Saint Saturn could have the powers of the god Saturn, god of time. Jupiter, who is Zeus in Greek, is the god of thunder. Mars is the god of war. Venus is the god of love. And Mercury, or Hermes in Greek, is the messenger god and god of trickery. And to be honest, all of these would be plausible powers for each of the Goros. However, I would argue that these gods aren't actually related to their powers at all. I mean, the god of thunder to me sounds a lot more like Enel. The god of war doesn't really make any sense power related. Love to me is just Boa Hancock and being a messenger sounds like a pretty lame power to me. So instead, I'd like to argue that these are not the Gorosei's powers, but rather their role as heads of the government. Mercury would be in charge of communication and messaging, be it with the Marine Marines, Cypherpole, or people like Shanks. Mars would be the Gorosei in charge of war. He would be the Gorosei who was organizing the war at Marineford, for example. Jupiter, I personally think, would be the Gorosei in charge of using the ancient weapon Uranus. After all, it looks like the world government used it to destroy an entire island just a few chapters ago. And Saturn, our Gorosei in this chapter, would be in charge of anything related to time and history, so it would only make sense that he is the guy who's coming for Vegapunk, who has all the lost knowledge from the ancient kingdom that was gathered by the researchers on Ohara. As for Venus and love, I have really no idea what that would be about, honestly. That's a bit of a hole in that entire theory. Maybe Oda took her as the god of prosperity and not love, and it's the Gorosei in charge of finances or something like that. Let me know if you have an idea. Now, if the gods connected to the planets aren't the true power of the Gorosei, what is? Well, let me flex my uh, Japanese skills a little bit for this. 
because there are specific kanji for each of the planets. Pluto has the kanji for darkness, the same as Rayleigh's dark king title, by the way. Uranus has the kanji for the sky, and Neptune has the kanji for the ocean, and these three are kind of in their own category. The five planets connected to the five elders, on the other hand, share a completely different category of symbols. They are the five traditional Chinese elements of Qi, fire, wood, water, earth, and metal. Mars has the kanji for fire, kase. Mercury has the kanji for water, suise. Jupiter is wood, mokse. Venus is metal, kinse. And Saturn is earth, dose. And honestly, I think that these five elements make way more sense for the Gorosei's true power than the Greek gods. I mean, fire, wood, water, earth, and metal could be versions of devil fruits or some other sort of special ability comparable to the ancient weapons. But if you think we're done here, <laughs> we're just getting started because the best part is what comes next. Because these five traditional Chinese elements aren't alone. The entire ancient system is actually known as the doctrine of yin, yang, and the five elements. In other words, the five elements surround the yin and yang, dark and the light that bring balance to the universe. So next to the five gorosei, we have a force of light and a force of dark that keep the balance in the world. Hmm, I wonder, have we ever heard anything related to light and dark in One Piece? In the unlikely case you still haven't caught on, let me show you this. This is one normal week in the Japanese calendar. And you'll notice that five out of the seven days of the week have the exact same kanji as the five planets slash the five elements. Tuesday is fire, Mars. Wednesday is water, Mercury. Thursday is wood, Jupiter. Friday is metal, Venus. And Saturday is earth, Saturn. The two remaining Remaining days are, you guessed it, Sunday and Monday, the day of the sun and the day of the moon. Same in Japanese. Sunday has the kanji for the sun and Monday has the kanji for the moon. Yin and yang, darkness and light, the five elements. Also, I'm really grateful to Oda because thanks to One Piece, I now finally understand the logic behind both the weekdays and the planets in Japanese. Thanks. So the sun part of this diagram is now pretty easy to fill, I think. That's of course is the sun god, Mika. This is how the Gorosei are directly connected to both Joy Boy and Luffy. Now the moon part on the other hand could be two people I think. Either it is Blackbeard, the kid who never sleeps, the dark opposite to Luffy, and the kid that was crying under a moon. Or it is Imu, the secret ruler of the world, the person who defeated Joy Boy and the ancient kingdom, the darkness that balances Luffy's light. And really, when you think about it, it makes sense on on so many levels. Why Luffy's devil fruit is so important, what it means for Luffy to have become Joy Boy, why Shanks, who cares about the balance of the world, was meeting with the Gorosei, and why Blackbeard is the polar opposite to Luffy. And if that wasn't enough yet, this system might actually tell us a little bit about what happened during the Void Century. For instance, it could mean that the Gorosei once all ruled over different planets, or it could mean that the Gorosei, Emu, and Joy Boy were once allies that created a balance across the world until Emu decided to to betray Joy Boy to break that balance. Another alternative could be that it will take both Luffy and Blackbeard, the reincarnations of Joy Boy and Rocksteady Zebek together in order to bring balance back to the world and take down Emu who broke that balance in the first place. And if you think about it, that might also explain why the Gorosei are modeled after politicians who are known for bringing people freedom. Because maybe they are actually a force for the good, the five gods waiting for the sun and the moon gods to return to bring Bring back balance to the universe as a complete set of seven. Which would of course also explain why Shanks would work with them as well. Now, I was puzzling most of this together while I was writing the script like five minutes ago. So if you want a follow-up video on this where I have more time to think about it and puzzle more things together, let me know by subscribing to the channel. And in the meantime, here's the review of last week's chapter. Make sure to check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching.